Hello and welcome back to our series on beautiful soup. So we got about two more videos in this series. In our last video, uh, basically what we went over is we talked about the tree structure and we talked about how to navigate um, more directionally. So understanding that if we go to the next element, we're just simply talking about the tag after the one that we're currently at. Um, and then we can go next or previous. And if we want to just do one, it would be next element, previous element. And then if we wanted to do all of the elements below or before a particular tag, it would be the generators that um, do next elements and previous elements. And so now that we understand that there's this kind of tree structure related to our code, we're going to talk now again about finding particular parts of our code, because now that we understand that there's this kind of family tree aspect, we can actually find these particular siblings and parents inside of our code. And so basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna run all of this code again, just to make sure it loads. And from here, what we're gonna talk about is finding a particular tag's parent. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna display um, simple soup dot b. Oh, lordy, lordy. Did I not just, let me just do run all. Okay, there we go. So we took this particular tag, simple soup dot b. If you don't remember, that was simply right up here with our particular tree. And so all we're talking about is this tag right here. And say we wanted to find the parent of tag b. How would we go about doing that? Well, it's actually really simple. All we have to do is we just do simple soup dot b, so the tag b, and then we call the find parent function or method. And so what this one will do is it will simply return the parent of tag b. But what if we want all the parents to tag b in the sense of maybe we want the great grandparent or the parent of the parent? Well, how would that work? Well, lucky for us, it's pretty much identical. Um, all we're doing is we're gonna simply do parents versus parent. And so with this one, we basically get a list back where it starts out with our basic one, so the parent, um, and then the parent of that parent, and then we get the parent of that parent, um, and then we get this last one, which is basically just referencing the entire document. So this one is uh, uh, getting the B tag, find the parent of the B tag, find all the parents, of the B tag. So that's how we can find parents. So naturally people kind of say, well, if I can find parents, I should be able to find siblings, right? And the answer is of course, yes. Um, and so really what we can do is we can take pretty much the same exact one. Um, and something I'll do is I'll just put this down here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna find the next sibling, right? So I wanna say, what's the next sibling of B? Well, if we go back up to our tree, um, its sibling is C. So we're expecting the next sibling uh, method to return that. And so we'll change this to uh, next sibling. And then what if we want all of the siblings? Well, in this particular example, we're only gonna get returned one, but if there was more than one sibling, um, what we can do is, again, we'll just take the next sibling method and we attach an S to it, and then that will return all the siblings to that particular um, tag. Now, again, in this example, because B is the last sibling, um, there's technically nothing after that, right? Oh, uh, what did I do? Oh, sorry. And it's not next sibling, it's find next sibling. Okay. And so with this one, we get B, the sibling of B is C, and then if we do find all the siblings, um, it's C. And then again, we can go next, we can also go previous. So I'll insert a cell below. Um, and then this one is finding the sibling, find all the siblings. And then with this one, what we'll do is we'll find all the previous siblings, but I'll start at C this time since I'm going backwards. So now what we're gonna do is find uh, the siblings of the C tag, and then find all the siblings of the C tag. <laughs> and so I'll change that. 
and I'll change that. And then it is now previous sibling. So this will return the previous sibling to C. And then if we want all the siblings that uh, are basically before C, then we'll do previous siblings. Now, again, in this situation, because there's only one sibling between the two, um, it's only gonna return one. But we can see that now this one returns B and then this one returns uh, B as well. But if there was more than one, it would have returned, um, what is it? The other ones as well. Now, we also know that, okay, so we can do siblings and all that kind of stuff. What about elements? Can we do the same? So can we find the next element that belongs to a particular tag? The answer is, of course, yes, right? So we'll take this one. Uh, I'll insert a cell below. And then I'll put this here. Uh, and then this one will actually work with the A tag, just this example. Um, and say I want to find the next element uh, to the A tag. So what we would do is we would just change this to find next. And then if I want all the elements that are basically attached to A, um, we can just do find all next. And so it would be all underscore next. And again, in both of these examples, we are working with the A tag. So again, here is the A tag. The next element would be the B tag. So that comes directly after the A tag. And then if I went one layer deeper, basically, the next element after that is the C tag. So in this example, we actually do get both back because um, now we're not talking more about the relationship. We're just talking directional, um, you know, which ones are kind of uh, directly below our A tag. And in this case, it would be B and C. So we can find all the next ones. So naturally, again, the question kind of bakes itself. Well, can we go the opposite direction? And obviously we can. Um, and so with this one, I'm not gonna start at A this time. I'm actually gonna start at C. So I'll find all the ones here. And then I'll change this one. So find uh, the next element of the A tag and I'll say find all the next elements of the A tag. And then from here, find the previous element of the A, well in this case we're gonna do the C tag. So I'll change that, <clears throat> change that, change that change that, and then we're gonna say find previous. And then after this one, again, this, find all previous, and then find all the previous elements of the A tag. Perfect. So this one will find the one that's directly um, before it, and then the, this one will find all the elements that are directly before it. And so we'll see here, here is the C tag, here's the B tag, and then before the B tag becomes this little mess, well actually sorry, before the C tag becomes this one first, then it's all of this, then it's the body, and then it's the actual HTML tag itself. Okay, so um, that actually does it for this particular video. I just kind of wanted to throw those ones out there in case people were wondering how to use them. Um, but really there's just four different categories. Um, one is for parents, one is for siblings, uh, directional with siblings, so siblings is broken into two, find next, find previous, and then it's the element direction. So find next element and then find previous elements, um, and then those are really all the categories. And now that I think about it, it's actually five categories. <laughs> Can't count today apparently. So yeah, that's just kind of how you would find, you know, the elements, the parents, or the descendants for um, particular tags that you're working with. So if you have any questions about that, obviously put that down in the, um, you know, comments below. We'll try to get back to you and all that kind of fun stuff. And then we will see you in the next and final video related to our little series on Beautiful Soup. So see you in the next video.